Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user Inort. I, 22 male, suspect something between my girlfriend, 22 female, and my friend, 21 male. We all live together. Am I imagining things? We are two couples living together and we all attend the same university. The apartment was originally leased to my girlfriend of about two years, Alexis, 22 female, and our mutual friend Brooke, 22 female. The apartment is huge and expensive. There were originally supposed to be three girls living there, but the last one backed out abruptly. They were planning on moving somewhere cheaper, but they had put a lot of work into the apartment and loved it so much that they hated the idea of leaving. I offered to move in when my lease was up six months ago so we could split the rent and utilities three ways. I was sleeping over often anyways. Both girls were absolutely ecstatic about the idea. Shortly before I moved in, Brooke started dating my best friend Derek. This was cool because now both couples could hang out with their best friends and significant others all at once. It seemed perfect. Derek began sleeping over a lot, and when his parents sold their house and left last month, he temporarily moved in. We haven't really pushed for him to find a new place because splitting everything four ways is helping all of us so much. But again, only Alexis and Brooke are on the lease. The apartment owner surprisingly does not mind as long as the rent gets paid, because we are always quiet. Now, there have been three incidents that made me think something was up. If it weren't for these combined incidents, I would never make an accusation like this because Alexis is such a sweet and shy girl and Derek has been a brother to me. They don't seem flirty, but as I mentioned before, all four of us are very close friends, so we spend a lot of time together. Now, Brooke and I have early classes, so we're gone by 8am. Derek and Alexis start in the afternoon, so it's not unusual for them to leave together, though they usually take separate cars. One of these days, I decided to wait for Alexis outside of her class so I could surprise her with lunch. I watched everyone shuffle out of the class, but Alexis wasn't with them. I texted her asking where she was and she replied, Just get out of class, gonna go home to study. I called her to see if I had just barely missed her or something and there was no response, which I considered weird because she had just texted me a second ago. She didn't answer until much later, which is also unusual for her. She's one of those girls that's often on her phone. I ran into Brooke later and she mentioned in passing that Derek had stayed home sick. She was going to bring him soup, blah blah. At the time, I didn't think much of it. When I got home later that night, I noticed Alexis's car was in the same exact spot. She usually parks in guest parking because our unit only has three spaces. As a result, her car moves a lot. I asked her if she'd gone to class and she got quiet before sheepishly admitting to skipping because she felt the professor sucked at explaining things, but she knows I hate it when she skips classes. Something that's gotten her grades in trouble before, but she recently started doing better. I kissed her and said I trusted her judgment. While I was doing the dishes, she explained how she probably won't skip again because being bored alone in the house was the worst. I laughed and we went about our business. At night we went to bed and as I laid there drifting off, it hit me. She shouldn't have been alone because Derek was home sick, right? She was still up on her phone, so I popped awake and asked her where Derek was today since Brooke had said he was home sick. She seemed startled by the question, but that may have been from me being half asleep to suddenly wide awake with a random question. She said he was here a bit in the morning but went to do errands or something. She wasn't sure. After the other incidents, I realized that the scattered way she answered this question seemed off, but that may just be my imagination. The second incident happened when I went to throw some stuff out in the kitchen garbage and I noticed a condom wrapper that was the exact same brand Alexis and I use. It wasn't super visible, sort of tucked behind a cereal box, but the distinctive color caught my eye. Brooke and Derek always use a different brand. It was weird because we usually keep the wrappers in our respective room's garbage cans, so they never appear in the kitchen. Furthermore, because of exams and general stress, Alexis and I hadn't slept together in a few days. I didn't really dig around for a used condom or anything. I just went back to the room to check if any of ours were missing. I really couldn't tell because we buy in bulk. My first thought was that Brooke and Derek had run out and broken into our stash and I was upset that they hadn't even asked. 
Later that night, I mentioned the condom wrapper to Alexis, and her eyes got wide. When I mentioned my theory, she got unusually distressed, she's always very calm, and went on a rant about them violating our privacy. I suggested we talk to them about it, and she immediately shut the idea down and made me swear not to bring it up unless they did it again. She didn't want to have this awkward conversation, which was weird to me because we're all generally pretty open about sex given that we live together. Though it is possible that Alexis was being genuine because she's from a conservative small town and she doesn't talk about these things as much as we do. Now, Derek and I are cool with the dudes in the apartment next to us, who are graduates of our university. We don't hang out or anything, but we have the kind of relationship where we make small talk about sports or whatever in the hall and are comfortable asking the other to keep it down without it being awkward. This takes us to the third incident last Monday. I was locking up when no one else was at the apartment when I ran into one of the guys from next door. We talked football for a bit and then he mentioned that one of the couples in the apartment is really a fan of morning sex and that the walls were way too thin. I laughed because Alexis and I usually had sex on weekend mornings when we had the house to ourselves. Brooke and Derek usually spends weekends at her parents' house, about an hour and a half away. The more I thought about it later in the day, the more I realized we hadn't been having morning sex in about a month. On the weekends, it had been more towards the evening or not at all. Did he mean on weekdays? My heart sort of dropped. I kind of want to ask him to elaborate, but the conversation ended and I feel like I missed my chance. Plus, it's a weird thing to ask and I feel like I must be paranoid. So there you have it. Am I crazy? Am I looking for signs that aren't there or is something up? And if so, how do I proceed? I don't want to ask her just yet because one, I don't want to come off as crazy and jealous if nothing happened, and two, if something is up, I don't want them to start hiding it better. I was thinking of dropping by one of those mornings they're alone together, but I don't know how to time it right. If I drop by too early or late, they might get more cautious. Well, this is a psyche situation, OP, particularly because the three incidents that you mentioned would indicate that somebody is having sex in the mornings in your apartment. And regarding your girlfriend's attitude for the questions, you know, the one involving Derek, she was pretty vague about that one. And the one regarding the condom, how she shut it down so quickly, what's the problem with asking your roommates, hey, did you guys by any chance take one from our stash? There's nothing wrong with asking that question, especially because you say you guys are pretty open regarding sex talk. Now, I do believe there's foul play involved, I just can't say specifically who it is. Could be Derek on his side, could be your girlfriend on her side, or could be the both of them together. You might be suspicious of your best friend because of the being homesick thing, but when you asked your girlfriend, she was really vague about it. Did you ask Derek to see if their stories matched? Did he go do errands or anything like that? I think your idea to drop by at some point in the apartment to kind of clear this thing up is a really good one. What about you guys? What do you think is going on here? And when do you think Opie needs to stop by the apartment? Let me know in the comment section, and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Bernie1 says, Your neighbor is an effing bro and giving you a massive hint in my opinion. Throwaway99038 says, Too many coincidence. Dude, her cheating is very much a possibility. Talk to Brooke about the condom wrapper thing, you may have your answer. And Opie responds, I mean, I feel like I'd be violating the promise I made to her just to make a huge accusation against her. If nothing's going on, I think I'll end up damaging the relationship. Brooke is sort of a loudmouth and much closer to Alexis than me. I feel like she'll definitely tell her I asked. K43 says, The chances are pretty good that something is going on. Sorry man, but that many things all stacking up one after the other just screams cheating to me. Your best bet is just to go home early one day and see what's going on. Definitely keep your eyes open for the next few weeks. And Opie responds, That sounds like the best plan. I'm just praying I time it right. I'll definitely update if anything new happens. So the community also thinks that something's going on here, but they also can't say definitively what it is. They just tell Opie to keep an eye out, which he's going to do. Now Opie has given us three updates, so let's continue with the first one to see what happens next. The majority of you suggested that I speak to Brooke and or attempt to walk in on the act. I decided on doing both. Sunday night everyone was back in the apartment. I had every intention of speaking to Brooke about the neighbor's comment alone, but before I could, she said something that completely threw my theory off. She told Derek to get to bed so he wouldn't be tired for work in the morning. 
What? I knew Derek has a job on campus, but he had always worked the same night shifts. Being as casual as possible, I inquired how long he'd been working mornings and when he started. He said he picked up the extra shifts a month ago and worked at 9. I leave at 7.45, so it's possible for me not to have noticed that. I spent the rest of the night trying to figure out whether he was lying about that, whether he had still had some mornings here at home, whether Alexis could be seeing someone other than Derek in the mornings, like some of you suggested, or again, if I was just a paranoid loser. I went to bed feeling emotionally drained and confused. The next morning I left for classes as usual and operated on autopilot. I alternated between thinking I'd run home to check on Alexis and thinking I had way too much work to run around based on a theory that I wasn't even sure about anymore. In the end, I walked out of my first class and straight to my car to go home. In a weird way, I sort of wish I hadn't. When I got to the apartment, Derek's car wasn't there, just Alexis's. I walked to the apartment with my heart pounding, all sorts of crazy. I don't know what I was expecting. Outside the apartment door, I could immediately hear a guy's voice inside. I heard him talking and laughing and a soft feminine mumble replying and giggling back. I've been on this subreddit long enough to see all the different reactions people have to this situation. I never once contemplated what I'd do. I pressed my ear to the door and see if I could make out what they were saying, but I could only make out a word here and there. There was a lot of giggling. Then I heard the sound of Alexis being tickled and shrieking. Maybe I should have waited more. In retrospect, I wish I did, but I couldn't take it. As soon as I started fiddling with my keys, it was dead silence in there. She was effing Mark. I never mentioned Mark in the previous post, but he's one of the guys in the apartment next to us. Not the one that tipped me off. He's the only one I've never liked. Effing, know-it-all, douchebag attitude, always made inappropriate comments towards both girls, but never thought anything of it. As soon as I opened the door, they both gave me a deer-in-headlights look that removed any naive doubt I may have retained that the situation was innocent. I was planning on yelling at them or demanding answers, but my eyes began to well with tears. I didn't want them to see that crap, so I said, nice, real effing nice, and bolted back to my car. I heard Alexis yelling my name in the hallway and picked up the pace. I sort of expected her to be chasing me, but by the time I got to the car, there was no one following me. I drove to a park that's near the apartment and sat there in disbelief. My first thought, weirdly enough, was how is my family going to take this? What the hell am I going to tell them? My family effing loved Alexis. They joked about our wedding and regularly called her part of the family. Then I started thinking about living arrangements. Our finals end in about two weeks. There's no way I can handle moving now. I'm applying to an extremely competitive graduate program and I can't let anything get in the way of that. Definitely not this. I am welcomed to stay at a friend's home. I'm going to have to go back home to get some clothes sometime. I'm planning on going during this lab period I know Alexis can't skip tomorrow. It took her an hour to start blowing up my phone, but once she did, it didn't stop. She started off by asking me to come home so she could explain. Before I even had the chance to respond, she sent another one begging me to come back because she was having an anxiety attack, something I always helped her through. Maybe I'm heartless, but all I could think was good, you earned it. There was a pause and then she sent, I don't know why you get so jealous, we were just hanging out. I waited and then she said, look, I know it looks super sketchy, but believe me, if I were you, I'd think the same thing, but we weren't doing anything. He needed advice on girl problems. You have to believe me. No, no, I don't. Normally, I would have gotten a weird sense of satisfaction watching a cheater scramble to cover their ass, but my stupid brain just kept replaying all these great times we had together and wondering if she was cheating then too. I want to know when this started, but at the same time I'm worried it's been going on for longer than the month I've suspected something. I received a text later that night from a number I didn't recognize. It was the nice dude from next door. He said, paraphrasing because it was a long text, that he got my number from Derek. He was extremely sorry for what I was going through and that he would have told me sooner but he wasn't completely sure. He said he knew his friend was seeing a girl with a boyfriend but didn't put it together until he learned the girl's name. As many of you suspected, the comment was him trying to tip me off. So yeah, I guess he's bro of the year. I don't think Derek and Brooke know yet. I haven't texted them. I haven't found the words. I know it's going to turn our living arrangement and friendships upside down. I guess I should message them before Alexis paints a different picture. 
So it wasn't Derek, it was one of the neighbors which we didn't know about until now. Considering this mess, I'd say the only silver lining here is that apparently OP wants nothing to do with Alexis and their relationship is over, like it should. But we can't be sure of that yet, so how about we move on to the next update to see what happened. A clarification on the last update, I wasn't clear about what I saw when I walked in. They weren't literally effing, they were just sitting on the couch with a deer in headlights look that was incredibly incriminating and they both went quiet. It was just obviously not a hey guess who dropped by kind of situation. Anyways, on to the update. I've been extremely busy with the semester ending and I took the majority advice to bury my head in work. I've spent a lot of time at the library because Alexis never goes there. In the process of posting the last update, I realized how dumb it was that I hadn't contacted Derek and Brooke with my side. I screenshotted the text from the cool neighbor, Will. Side note, all names have been changed except Mark, because F you, Mark. Within the minute, Derek was blowing up my phone with calls and texts that made it very apparent he didn't know anything. At the same time, Alexis was sending texts begging me to meet up with her. I was feeling miserable and sent back a single text to Derek saying I wasn't feeling up to talking, then put my phone away for the night. In the morning, I got a text saying to meet him at my favorite restaurant for dinner and drinks on him, assuring me that no one would be there, not even Brooke. I haven't had any appetite since everything went down, but the offer meant a lot and I really did want to see him so I decided to go after class. I got to the restaurant first and I had my heart in my throat worrying that Alexis would somehow be there, but she wasn't. Derek came up to me and gave me a big hug and opened with, dude, what the F? So here's where crap gets a bit crazy and dramatic. A lot of you suggested that Brooke might side with Alexis or had been covering up for her the whole time. I wasn't so sure because while she is closer to Alexis, she and I have been friends for a bit longer. According to Derek, as soon as he told Brooke, she was absolutely furious. In his words, I sort of wanted to bitch Alexis out, but Brooke took care of that and then some. Remember how I said Alexis came from a conservative small town? Her parents had no idea that we were living together and she constantly stressed that they couldn't know or they'd cut her off financially. They liked me enough to be polite, but they were constantly worried a relationship would distract her from school and didn't want her getting pregnant or whatever. Derek said that Brooke demanded Alexis pack her things and find a new place or she'll call up her parents and tell them everything. Derek told me that later that night, Alexis was sitting in the living room hugging a sweater I'd left behind and wailing at the top of her lungs that her life was over when Brooke yelled from her bedroom, well maybe you shouldn't have effed Mark then. Imagining that moment was kind of funny. Brooke's always been a very no-nonsense girl with a hot temper, but I definitely didn't expect this. It was extremely touching that she took the cheating that seriously. During that dinner, all my fears that I'd lost my friends were completely washed away and I was able to choke down a few pieces of sushi. When we left dinner, Derek promised to let me know when Alexis was gone so I could move back in. I declined his offer because one, even if she does move out, everything in that apartment reminds me of her, including Derek and Brooke. Two, Alexis and Mark probably effed in my room, so I really don't want to sleep in it. And three, in the current emotional state I'm in, I don't want to be third wheeling a happy couple, even though I'm sure they'd be considerate. He understood my points but said to let him know if I changed my mind because Brooke and Alexis' friendship seems to be pretty over. This week has been pretty uneventful, but I keep having to dodge Alexis. Luckily, I'm in an undergraduate program that only has 60 students. I asked two friends to keep an eye out for her after telling them the story and started showing up to class at last minute. As far as I know, she only waited outside one of my classes. I got a text saying, She has been spotted in front of that classroom. Waterworks are in progress. Proceed with caution. I ended up skipping that class because I didn't know if she was going to leave and I really didn't want to risk it. Later that night, she sent me a really long Facebook message explaining everything from the beginning and it sort of made me sick to read. I contemplated not reading it, but once I opened it, I just had to. She said that he'd been flirty with her in the halls and she tried to be friendly back, but it must have come off as flirting because he kissed her mid-sentence one day. She said she felt guilty that she let him on and that guilt prevented her from shooting him down in future advances because she felt like it was her fault it happened and she has trouble saying no. Huh? She said they'd only slept together three times and she hated it and she was going to end it during the conversation I walked in on. 
She said she understood if I needed some time and some space, but that she'd do absolutely anything to make it right and would spend the rest of her life making it up to me by treating me like a king. I'd never have to cook, clean or do my laundry again. Give me full access to her phone and passwords. She even suggested we install Life360, an app that allows you to track someone's location through their phone, so I would know where she is at all times. Cut off all contact with Mark and all her male friends, just for good measure, I guess. Make up sex whenever I want it. Yeah, that sounds like a healthy relationship, right? I didn't answer. I kind of wanted to keep her on Facebook and watch the crap show unfold. She was posting dramatic statuses and song lyrics about mistakes and forgiveness and some from our song. But I know how I am. I don't want to compulsively check her page and go through old photos. So I blocked her. Derek sent me a text a few hours later saying, She's crying and screaming about you blocking her, lol. In happier news, the family I'm staying with is fantastic. I felt a little guilty about taking up their space, electricity, etc. So I offered to put down rent and pay for some bills. I am unemployed, but my family gives me a decent allowance for rent and food, but they declined. The dad said, first month's free. If you need more time here, then we'll talk about it, and winked. My friend was telling me that they have hosted his and his sister's troubled friends, so it wasn't a big deal. Still, I'm unbelievably grateful. As for Will, awesome neighbor, I called him to thank him for everything. He told me that Mark has been unusually quiet the past few days and told another one of the guys that he had gotten dumped. Whatever, I don't want to think about it. I sent Brooke a message thanking her for kicking Alexis out and she said she'd do it regardless of whether or not I moved back in. She's going to give me a heads up on when Alexis is gone so I can get the rest of my things. In the meantime, I'm spending a lot of time studying, applying to grad schools and hanging out with the guy I'm living with. I'm going to wait until after finals to tell my parents about the situation because my mom asks a million questions about everything and I'm not in the mood to answer them. Well, I think so far Opie is handling it like a pro. Considering all the cheap excuses that Alexis gave that just made me laugh. Like they were so stupid. But anyways, good for you Opie. So now let's move on to the final update to see how this story ends. Once finals ended, everything hit me like a ton of bricks. I removed all my social media pictures with her, threw out stuff that reminded me of her and took our songs off my playlist, yada yada. We've been inseparable since we met, so this was over two years of accumulated memories. Long story short, it was very hard, but I had an urge to get it all done quickly. Anyways, one particular Redditor sent me a message about how Alexis might be driving to dangerous thoughts now that she's lost everything, her closest friends, her boyfriend, her apartment. I know that seems like an overdramatic prediction, but I couldn't get it out of my mind after reading it. What Alexis did was absolutely freaking terrible, but I felt like a final conversation might give me better closure and maybe help her understand that it's completely over and get her to move on. So I sent Alexis, if you want to talk, we can meet up somewhere, but there's no way we can be together after what happened, so please don't ask, okay? She responded almost immediately, asking when and where. We arranged to meet at an off-campus coffee place. When I got there, she was already at the table and got up to hug me. I waved her away and she jerked back. I felt crappy immediately, but I wanted to get it over with. She asked how I'd been, how were finals, etc. But I sort of interrupted it. I asked her if she had been unhappy with our relationship. Her eyes got real wide and she said no 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 a bunch of times and got quiet. So I asked her why she did it if she wasn't unhappy. Basically, she retold the story about having trouble saying no and him being so pushy. I stopped her and asked her to cut the BS and just take responsibility. That maybe it excused her actions up until he kissed her mid-sentence, but sex three times? Yeah, no. She looked down, shrugged, and muttered, You're right, I know. She started tearing up and said she was so sorry that I'd never understood how sorry she was. Then she asked if there was any chance we could be together again, which I kind of was expecting even though I told her not to. I just shook my head. I told her she could still live with Derek and Brooke if she wanted to, but she declined and told me she already had plans to move in with another girlfriend of hers. From here on out, the conversation went in circles, with her trying to explain away her actions, with her difficulty turning down guys due to her fear of being seen as a frigid bitch, and me trying to get her to admit that excuse was garbage. I don't know why, I just really needed her to stop using that crutch and admit she had ruined a perfectly good relationship with a very real future all on her own, but she just wouldn't. She was always stubborn. 
Finally, I let it go and we parted ways somewhat amicably. As I was leaving, she grabbed my hand and parted her lips to say something but ended up shaking her head and letting go. The conversation made me feel worse than I had before, at first. But ultimately, it really made me see that she was never the kind of person I wanted to be with, even without the cheating. She never took responsibility for anything. Failed classes were because the professor was incompetent, not finding a job or internship was bad luck and not her lack of effort, etc. I just never really thought about it too hard. I leave the coffee place and ask Derek to hang out. I ended up going to the apartment and although Brooke was there, she mostly stayed in her room. We drank some beers and played some video games. It really cheered me up. We also talked a bit about everything that happened. He admitted that they hadn't been able to find a third roommate. Aside from complete strangers, they'd rather not move in and asked me again to stay with them. I could tell he really wanted me to and I felt guilty about them being stuck with the lease so I accepted. I told him I'd wait until Alexis took all her things though. The furniture is hers from before I even moved in and I still don't want to sleep in that bed. Life isn't perfect now, but I'm doing better. Alexis moved her crap out, I bought a second headbed and dresser of another student, I had my first round of classes last week, and although I'm going to sound like a total nerd, the courses are really cool and hands-on, and the professors are incredibly cool people. Derek and Brooke have been really supportive and don't make me feel like a third wheel at all. I saw Mark in the hallway once and he totally ignored me and I ignored him. But the urge to punch him in the face was very real. I guess that's something that will go away over time. Well OP, like you say, life isn't perfect right now, but it seems to be getting better and going in a positive direction. You certainly have a good support network there with Derek and Brooke. So at this point, I'm gonna wish all the best to you in the future. Take care OP and thank you for sharing. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I really did enjoy reading them to you. So if you did, then don't be shy and go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe or even share this video with people that you might think will enjoy my storytelling. Also, if you have the time, go down to the video description and check out all the links I have for you, from our Discord community to my channel merch. And finally, I'd like to say thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me that you enjoy my videos. And having said all that, I'll see you guys in the next video.